I'm going to attempt something uh, that I've never tried before, namely speaking at this meetup uh, and talking about apps that I haven't fully built yet. See, and it might go like that. So <laughs> um, we'll have some fun with that. Um, my name is Dean Radcliffe, and I work at Opinion Lab. And uh, Opinion Lab is a voice of consumer feedback company who's sponsoring this. Also, 2Ks is uh, sponsoring this. Cole Erickson over there. Up, is helping organize, uh, and uh, thanks to Cole and 2Ks for bringing the pizza and the food and for Opinion Lab for getting the space. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that we're all here. Uh, why are we here? Was it what, what, what attracted? Is it the, the Meteor technology in general or the, or the thought of doing mobile apps with Meteor? Um, anybody? Yeah. Media in general. Um, the last meetup uh, was rather small. That's why I asked. So I'm really glad to see the numbers on the rise. Uh, and I hope that we can certainly keep the numbers uh, stable and on the rise and uh, continue to have places to visit, things to work on, online tools to collaborate on. I think the sky is the limit for us. Um, one of the things I, I think is promising about this community is that people come to JavaScript from all different backgrounds, right? And you know, uh, Haskell people they have a certain you know predisposition, uh, not to stereotype. Um, I'm a Ruby person sometimes, um, and uh, I think that JavaScript being an accessible language can pull in all kinds of talent. Does anyone here have a design or front end background? Mainly, maybe you call it mainly. Okay, so you're like working towards the back end from the front. I think that's great. Uh, um, is anyone here looking at Meteor as their first JavaScript-based back end? Like, did anyone like, skip Node and you're just you're looking at? Okay, uh, Meteor. Okay, right. So it's like, hey, let's just. It seems a little more accessible than Node, perhaps. Um, <clears throat> is anyone here cheating uh, on Ruby on Rails or Python? I am. I, <laughs> I have very interesting uh, discussions with my colleagues about this. Okay. And uh, who is tired of me asking all these questions? Okay. All right. So I, I think we're going to uh, be here working on solving several problems. Certainly, the title is Meteor for Building Mobile Apps. You know that this is a very new arena. Uh, they've only added support in Meteor Core for Cordova a couple weeks ago. And I've been doing my best to stay connected to this. So I want to give you ways to stay connected, including this meetup, including the last 30, 45 minutes to do open hack stuff. Um, 
And I also want to share with you some of the ways that I think about this because this is, to me, this is really big. Um, does anyone know uh, who started Ruby on Rails? DHH. DHH, David Hanover. He's, a, he's like, a, it, it, among our community, David, the Ruby on Rails community, he's like a household word. Does anyone know what city Ruby on Rails got started in? Effing Chi Town. Like half a mile over there. I'm not kidding. I've been to those offices. And now Chicago is in search of its own development identity. And just because Meteor comes out of San Francisco, I mean, look around, can't you, don't you almost think you're in San Francisco right here? Like, there's, there's nothing they have that we don't have. So I want to address that, that 10 years ago, Chicago was the beginning of a web framework revolution. And it was a revolution. It, I changed my career, I stopped doing .NET. I took, you know, risks to, to, to work with it. And I think the same kind of thing can happen here, so right? So I think I, that's how big I think this uh, can be. And it solves real problems. Um, development has become very fragmented. Uh, I'm sure there are things, it's like in order to do development these days, it's like you've got to do like JavaScript, you've got to do Ruby, and you've got to do like SQL, and oh my god, who wants to do all that all the time? So I see Meteor uh, providing a solution um, to that and shortening the uh, learning curves before it's even gone 1.0. Issues like HTML5, uh, REST, single page applications, Android, iOS development can all be done with a single language and an identical API on a server, client, and uh, mobile devices. I've yet to see any other framework come up with like as integrated a solution as this. Um, Remember when Java said it was the language that could write once, run anywhere? Isn't that kind of funny now? Like JavaScript is the language that's write once, run anywhere. We're going to do it tonight, uh, if not during my presentation, uh, during the hacks. We're going to put some JavaScript code on mobile devices without learning Swift or Objective-C. I don't know what news this spells for all the boot camps um, that are, you know, tooling up, there's still a place for mobile apps, certainly, but like, part of the problem is that time to market has grown too long. When I have to retool in another language and learn a new tool chain, uh, it takes time. So Meteor won't eliminate that. Uh, I have a mobile app running on my iPad, however, I don't have it in the App Store. I'm still jumping through the hoops necessary to do that. I'm gonna do it. We're all gonna do it if we're determined to get our apps on mobile devices, but at least if learning language is part of that. Uh, learning a new language as a part of that will be better off. I know some of you guys know this, uh, but real-time interactivity among websites like Google Docs, collaborative spreadsheet editing, collaborative code editing, hello, that's, that's the norm, that's expected. You know, when you screen share with someone and collaboratively work on code, that's how we want to work. That's what makes us feel closer together, uh, not farther apart. So. Uh, Meteor starts off real-time and reactive and only leaves that if you want to stray. Um, so I think these are real problems uh, that, that, that we're all facing today. Um, how many of you have ever put a web app into production? Raise your hand. That's most of us. How many of you have put a mobile app into production? It's less. In fact, the numbers that I read say that fewer than 40% of devs have put a mobile app into the develop into production. Why is that? You know, we, we can code. Um, I think I think we're a lot more of us in this room are going to be raising our hand. If not tonight, like in a couple of weeks or months, um, I'm hoping to beat the new year with my first app store app. Um, so what I see in this community, it's new. But I see motivated people getting together after hours, willing to take a chance, uh, willing to be members of the city of big shoulders. You know, we spawned Ruby on Rails 10 years ago in this city, and there's no reason we can't be instrumental in launching its successor. Oh, did I say that? I mean, a competitor, or whatever, an alternative um, in this landscape. So if you haven't done so already, uh, introduce yourself to somebody here. Uh, you may be working on a Meteor project together in a couple of months. It could be the case. So thank you again for coming.
uh, and I will get to the content of the presentation. I have two people signed up for lightning talks after this. We've got Eric, Eric, and uh, Greg, um, and uh, you know you can have uh, the time you ask for, or maybe even a little bit more. Um, so thank you. All right. So um, let's, let's talk a little bit about the community. Um, I can't pretend that I'm going to give you everything you need um, tonight. Um, staying connected to communities are a couple. Uh, uh, there are a couple of great communities to stay connected to. And yes. Uh, oh, it is cut off. Oh, that is creepy. All right. There we go. Uh, let's see what happened there. Let's try that. Uh, I thought it looked a bit wonky. Uh, da, da, da. <clears throat> oh, is that there? No, it's not. I will send out a link to these slides. This is, what's that? In this view, let's just do it in this view. Yeah. Um, so who is differential.io? Does anyone know who differential.io is? They're a prolific blogger, certainly. Uh, Josh Owens um, and Rye Walker are two guys. They run the Meteor podcast. So differential.io is a consulting company, much like 37 Signals was doing consulting with Ruby on Rails. So these guys have put together uh, about 25 Meteor apps into production in the last year. I consider them experts. Um, they're offering classes too. Josh Owens is. Uh, I took a four-day uh, mastering Meteor class with him last week. So they're really trying to evangelize in the community. They have some real production experience. Differential does. Um, Modulus.io. Well, y'all probably know if you've done the basic Meteor uh, tutorials, you can Meteor deploy to a, a site hosted on Meteor servers. Um, Modulus.io is like when you're going to step up um, to a hosted solution. You're going to pay some money. They have a her they spin up dynos, you know, like Heroku or you know, they're they're a cloud uh, hosting that appears production ready. Does anyone have any experience with them? Okay, that's where you've done your production media work. So are yeah, they're great? They're great and awesome. Okay, so that's your hosting solution. Um, um, and I understand Meteor itself is developing their own. We'll hear more about that when they announce it. And uh, God, there are so many blogs about them. And just feel free to chime up at any point. But I've, I've learned a lot from MeteorHacks.com um, and also the source code and uh, GitHub project for Meteor, Meteor slash Meteor. Uh, any, any other uh, sources for like kind of blogs and things people want to call, Greg? Meteor Help. MeteorHelp.com. Oh, it's an app that, that that pulls together all the Meteor Help. Oh, really? Meteor documents and examples. Et cetera, et cetera. Very nice. Very nice. Meteor Hacks is in my uh, history for sure. Evented uh, Mind. Um, they have great videos. I really would love to be able to produce videos like theirs. Um, just to show you to the uh, the GitHub uh, page, there's a uh, important thing on their GitHub page. I'll call it out in another slides too. But in their wiki, the uh, this has become the uh, Meteor Cordova phone grab integration page in the wiki has become like the official source of information about doing what we're trying to do tonight. Um, so that's on their uh, on their site, and we'll. Uh, make this display, but we'll, we'll use that. So lots of community stores. There's a Meteor Talk uh, Google group. Um, I don't know how we should best compile this information and share it among the meetup members of this. Um, I hope it's not only like a bunch of slides. Um, this is a really nice one I've got on, on my wall, hoping that osmosis, you don't have to read the text. Uh, these are the all the Meteor APIs. It's a cheat sheet that somebody put together, and it's color coded based on client code, server code, or everywhere code. So um, just I don't know, just having this on my wall kind of keeps me inspired. Uh, uh, where is it? 
um, meteor it was linked to on one of those sources earlier. So now we're getting into derivative sources of information. Like I think Meteor Hacks uh, listed it. Um, okay, and uh, one other thing um, is that when we talk about uh, mobile apps, there's still such a thing as mobile web pages, and um, the App Store is certainly the the the, the nirvana that we want to get to. There's a lot of steps along the way. And I think one of them include, in, includes improving your mobile web experience. So I don't know if anyone's noticed, but when you go to uh, docs.meteor.com and then you go into airplane mode, you can still surf docs.meteor.com. You can do static sites amazing with Meteor simply by uh, doing Meteor add app cache. And all your static resources are cached on the device. Uh, or a uh, browser, a uh, laptop browser. So um, there's a demo. I, I'll, I'll save it for the uh, hack version. Um, uh, that, at the hack night, I can go into a demo. But I was at a festival um, where people were like, hey, sign in on, you know, to our application on an iPad. And everyone knows that like in basements and large conferences, the Wi-Fi sucks. So... Um, there was a, I might be able to throw this open in a second. Um, this is uh, actually in a web page, but um, sign me up. Me, anyone can go to signmeup.meteor.com and they will have uh, an offlineable uh, mailing list app where your own local storage will save these names. Here's Happy Gilmore is in local storage here, but this works completely offline and I can get you the source code for that. And then someone says, you know, blah, 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 and then blah, blah, blah. And um, it gets put into local storage. And now the list, which is ready to be copied and pasted into Excel from this text area, is just, you know, there you go. I didn't do an app for that, right? So that was like working towards app nirvana. There's a lot of really interesting value add um, steps to pick up along the way. Okay. Um, I showed you on the Meteor Wiki, the Meteor mobile documentation. And uh, I don't know about you, but I, I, my impression really of what, what is, how does Meteor enable you to build an app? Well, there's a project called Apache Cordova, which is amazing. And <clears throat> it is, they call it the fast track to mobile application development. And you build mo native-like mobile applications with HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So you can think of the Meteor build iOS, Meteor run iOS commands as uh, wrappers around it. It, it, it. You can think of it saying, create an Apache Cordova project, minify my JS, concatenate my JS, put it all together, uh, put it into a uh, Cordova application, and then allow me to push it to my devices. So um, th this tutorial, which I uh, link to in the slides, I think you can search for it under, under uh, let's see, Cordovia tutorial, it's a high link. It's like the number one or whatever. So. When I was at jQuery Conf a couple weeks ago, I was lucky enough to sit in a talk where um, someone just went through a Cordova create application name. And I'm like, huh, that's just like Meteor create application name. And then inside of there, they you know, go through, I can show you some of the code of a raw Cordova project. Um, I think I'm on a Cordova branch here. <coughs> And uh, this, in case you don't know, is a, is, a, is a chess game app that I talked about at Chicago JavaScript. Um, but the key part is that um, I'm not even sure if this has been updated. Uh, I don't think it has. Sorry. Uh, my first Cordova baby. Um, yeah, this is the one where <clears throat> your HTML file sources, uh, where's the key part here, where it sources Cordova.js is down here. 
So um, this is a raw Cordova application, which uh, when built, um, does, uh, it's basically the outcome of doing the tutorial. It, it has one native call, which is when I hit the help button, instead of a uh, JavaScript alert, which always reads index.html, it's a platform alert, which has the name of the thing. So that's a native API call. Um, which you can get to by following this tutorial in like about half an hour, you can get to doing like a native API call with Cordova. So I was grateful for that experience because it also taught me that when you do a uh, Cordova build, um, LS platforms, <coughs> iOS, there's an Xcode project. And I can open platforms, iOS, Cordova baby, um, Xcode proj. And if you think Xcode is fun to read on a large display, wait till you see it on a small display. So um, again, this is just a Cordova vanilla project. But when you look at what um, when you look at what Meteor Build does for you, it pretty much does exactly the same thing where your assets are there. Uh, yeah. Good call. So it creates this and um, allows you, this tells me that if I click play right now, it will uh, run it in, uh, I believe, an emulator. Uh, no selected iOS. Uh, let me see, Cordova, I believe the command is uh, Cordova emulates iOS. Slightly different command than the Meteor command, um, in this case for, for emulation. But I didn't want to only show you, of course the scrolling's all messed up, but there it is. Okay, so that's how you kind of get this going. And then, then you quit the simulator. And so this is all without Meteor. You can run it in an emulator open up the Xcode file, <coughs> get your cable out, um, plug your, your cable in, and then you can run it and debug it by changing. This is important, this took me a while to find. I'm not an Xcode developer, but uh, destination. Um, once I plug this in, I'll have destination uh, of course. Don't judge my Billy Joel. Dean's iPad. So at this point, I'm just I'm just making. Uh, let's actually try that. What's what's uh what's life without some risk? Okay. So um, here uh, my index HTML has the word help. Okay. So help me, Rhonda. We're going to change the text and save it. We're going to uh, Cordova build iOS because there's actually two copies of there's the files in your root and then there's the files under platforms iOS, which creates the dub 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 for you. And so you need to do the build. And uh, so now if I get grep. Uh, I checked in all the build files here, so if I git grep Rhonda, you see the two places, uh, platforms iOS, dub, 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 and then dub, 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 so there's your source file, and then there's your, there's your build file. So you have to run the build. Uh, then at this point, uh, Xcode can set the product destination, Dean's iPad, and click uh, play. And it should update the app here and cause it to open up. And now it says, help me, Rhonda, in the upper corner. So don't forget that build step. Um, and I don't know if this is the usual workflow or the ideal workflow, but it really helped me to understand that there's an Xcode project, there are some build files, and uh, at that point, you know, I think you know, I can make it, make it happen. 
So uh, yeah, so that's a raw Cordova project. Um, <clears throat> it's very useful to go through that because at some point you'll probably be debugging something that's Cordova oriented. So the first challenge uh, is to you know get your developer account. You can't do anything in Apple land without it. It's uh, 99 bucks a year. I tried to sign up for a corporate account. Uh, they need a Dun & Bradstreet number. My newly minted corporation doesn't have a Dun & Bradstreet number yet. So I registered for it. They said 30 business days to get a Dun & Bradstreet number for your corporation. Or you can express that through for $600. I said, no thanks. I'll just get a $99 personal account. And then I'll move my assets over to my $99 business account when I get it. So uh, get some kind of developer account, get your Xcode updated. You know, if you don't have that done tonight, sorry I didn't call it out in advance. It probably won't happen tonight. It's a lot of, to download. Um, <clears throat> then uh, another challenge is using a Cordova plugin. So I kind of glossed over this. So Cordova, I think of now, when I look at Xcode, uh, let's open that up again. I think of Xcode, I think of Cordova as like the runtime, the hooking into all the iOS stuff. But if you want to raise native dialogues or um, handle volume buttons being pressed, I don't say accelerometer. You can get accelerometer just from mobile web, but you can't get volume buttons from mobile web. You can't get uh, notifications. Those things, those appy things, pretty much every single one of them is implemented in a plugin. And um, if I look back through, of course, this is not easy for you to see. <clears throat> if I look back through uh, commands that I've done related to plugins, um, Cordova plugin add um, is an example of adding a plugin to allow me to, to access the volume buttons. Okay, that one didn't work particularly, but. Um, and then when I saw how easy it was to do that with Cordova, I thought, you know, I could do a similar thing with Meteor. But one of the snags I run into was Meteor saying, uh, need to specify exact version of plugin. Has anyone seen that? So uh, I don't know if it's the version I'm on or it's not happy. So um, some of the documentation I read said, you know, when you're adding a, a, a plugin in me to me to a Meteor app, it's Cordova colon, then the uh, namespace of the plugin and then this is a bit of a trick to figure out at github the 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 path to the project in github slash tarball slash the sha of the commit so i guess github will automatically tarball a, a, your source at a certain uh is that right with this uh with this url and then so that's what i needed to do to use any of the non-standard cordova plugins in meteor um, I don't know what's standard and what's not. I don't know if this is, you know, just my own problem, but I thought I'd call Greg. Uh, now, let's explain something. At the dev shop in August, they said that the only Cordova plugins that were in the app or that was in the system was the camera plugin. Oh, the camera is the only official Meteor Cordova plugin? Yeah, and it's only the only Yeah, but you can do it with other plugins and you can do it Okay. That's what they were talking about. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So oh, that's complicated. Yeah. Online. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the magic sauce. that appears to be the magic sauce there. Um, only a few more uh, slides here, and then I'll open it up. Um, oh, yeah. And then, of course, you've got your app running on uh, your local device, so how does it talk back to the development server? I mean, this is right in the Meteor Wiki, but... Um, this will be on a, if they're both on Wi-Fi, you need the IP address of this, right? So you run the Meteor server code here, and then when you run iOS and set, you know, whichever IP you have, if you guys don't know how to get that, I can show you, but it's basically, um, I do something like this most of the time. You know, show me what uh, my current IP address is, and then I'll do Meteor run, iOS, port, this thing and then 3000 and then that sets whatever it sets in your Cordova app so that when it makes HTTP requests it's to your local server and I haven't got so far as putting a Meteor app in production but when I do 
it, I know that you'll be configuring the URL to talk back to um, with a command like this. Any questions on that? Um, this is all very uh, experimental. Uh, when you're doing Meteor, uh, Meteor Run iOS and it launches it in the emulator, I was getting tired at like the startup time of the emulator and doing things back and forth. So that might not always be your fastest solution. Uh, at least with the Cordova project, you can uh, simply, and I think the Meteor project, let me see, I, I, I don't, let me see, CD, uh, uh, something that I've built, ls, uh, is it dot .meteor dot, um, Cordova platforms, Ah, no, that's not it. Let me go back to the Cordova um, project. Um, you can open directly the um, platforms, iOS, uh, www, index HTML. Sometimes you can get a faster dev cycle by, you know, just using the um, HTML files directly. And in this case, this is the native JavaScript alert. That's the great thing about like isomorphic JavaScript is you can just write alert and have the web page do a JavaScript alert and then the Cordova built app do the uh, uh, actual native binding there. So I don't know. This this just might be a technique that you can use to uh, kind of test out some of your JavaScript, quickly develop it without running it through the emulator every time. And then I believe the answer uh, in all the Cordova documentation, it tells you run your code after the device ready event. Device ready is the onload of the Cordova world. So in order to do that, I believe your Meteor startup function uh, will just isomorphically, it'll do the right thing for Cordova apps. Um, so all of your things that talk to native APIs have to do so after this event. And uh, that's, uh, that's the time slot. And what questions does this bring up for anybody? How much did you, sorry, how much did you spend now in Cordova when you started building something with people? Were you in there just poking around looking at it, or did you find you were in both equally? Uh, I, 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 because you had to be, not because you were just curious. What made you able to Yeah, um, I'm curious uh, because uh, Cordova is really like, if you're an HTML JavaScript developer, uh, it's exciting that Meteor says, you know, here's how to get your stuff, you know, run a Meteor, run iOS and Meteor build. But like, it's really Cordova that's doing the heavy lifting. So I just like to get at the nuts and bolts underneath. So I don't know that you have to. Um, I just thought that I'd want to like do the Hello World Cordova tutorial first. So I just, I, I've probably spent about equal time in both environments, and I, I don't have like a best practice well, yeah, to offer curious. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're pretty much they pretty much crib the command. So to add a Cordova plugin, it's Cordova plugin add. To add a Meteor Cordova plugin, it's kind of the same thing. Right, yeah, that one is very much the same. Meteor add platform iOS, Meteor add platform Android. Yeah, 0, 9, 3 and greater. Um, in this documentation, they have the uh, exact, uh, this is in the Meteor wiki, they have the exact commands to run to do that. Yeah, it's very similar. They, they, they've done that in a lot of places, I think, as a design decision. It's like they didn't, they eliminate unnecessary friction. So like this pretty much comes, you know, you, you, a Cordova developer would be very familiar with this and a person familiar with this would be very familiar with the Cordova stuff. Yeah? How long, did take, how long have we spent messing around with Cordova, or with me or Cordova? Um, uh, five hours in each. Five to ten hours in each. Yeah. Huh? Dedicated day. 
Yeah, I think it, it was a dedicated day and a dedicated pair. By the way, I do hope to find people amongst you to like just get down and, and pair with on this stuff. Um, uh, yeah, a dedicated day. You could certainly uh, have your first, you know, with the cable plugged in and getting it running on the device. Like I went to my wife and I'm like, we're expecting in a, in a month. And I'm like, we're going we're gonna to be able to have like, an app for our kid. Like, why does the app, the kid, yeah, I don't know, but like the kid's going to come into this world with an app associated with it in like under two months. I'm certain in under two months, like you can have something of, you know, at least personal pleasure quality. Uh, and I would love to actually have some experience, um, you know, with production kind of stuff um, in about that time. Uh, also just FYI, uh, the, the differential I.O. guys um, are from Cincinnati. And coincidentally, Cincinnati Meteor is holding their meetup tonight, and they're talking about the same topic. So they have uh, done a Hangout on Air Live, and so have I. So what we've talked about and what I've shown on the screen uh, is going to be on Google Hangouts uh, as a pre-recorded thing. And so if... Uh, if you want, you know, twice the fun, um, go and listen to uh, the Cincinnati meetup that's happening tonight. And uh, yeah, one question back there. Yes. 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 Josh Owen said that he is signing up for uh, another uh, mastering meteor class. Mastering. It was very nicely set up. Um, Got into a few snags, uh, as you'd expect, but those were productive as well. But um, it was it was very nicely set up. I knew on the first day that like he had taken care of things. Like uh, actually, I can show you. So yeah, definitely, you know, express your interest in this class. Um, it was five hundred dollars, and I think very worth it. Uh, one of the things that they had, I can share with you later. Um, show you how they organized the project. They basically organized the project so that you could just knock out issues. It was almost like working on a team with a good product owner and a good HTML designer. Like it was like just okay. User can tweet. It was a Twitter club. User can tweet. User can follow other users. You know, and you just kind of tick off these issues, and then Josh, you know, goes into whatever discussions, you know, come out of people's questions. It was very cool. You hear that, Josh? <laughs> so, how do you handle assets for the inside? I I don't know how you do that yet. Uh, uh, looking to find out. Yeah. How you how you handle different assets and screen sizes? I also don't know. It's a bit of magic to me how Meteor decides like which images to put in the app bundle and other things. There are, <clears throat> excuse me, a handful of solutions like Retina.js. 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 Use SVG uh, to get away from rasterized images entirely. That sounds nice. OK, great. Um, thank you very much. Are you all excited about Chicago being a meteoric town? All right, thank you, Cole. Um, get some bathroom break time, and then um, we can set up for, uh, for uh, Eric. Would you like to go? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It's over.
Yeah, I made a book. That's my wallpaper. So, Cool. Um, so if you're on the Wi-Fi, uh, I'll be at this uh, IP address. So I'll pull up in the browser, 192.168.100. 118 at 42,000. Just the open I don't want to say that again. Uh, yeah, I can just One nine two one sixty eight. Super huge. Right here at four three thousand. One sixty eight. Yeah. Uh, are you on the radio? Hopefully, if you're on the radio, Wi Fi. Yeah. One nine two. Oh, you know what? I also used it. Yeah. Start it on media run. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would help. All right. Well, I was running, but I disconnected and went to another Wi Fi. Oh, I see. I think it's loading. So it should be up. Oh. All right. So I this is my first meteor app, and it is basically a recreation of Atari Combat, 1977 version of 19 of Atari Combat. Ooh. So let me try to make this, this is super huge. I'm gonna try to small that. Um. Oh. <laughs> Trying to fit on the screen plus I can. Or so it's um it's an HTML5 Canvas app, so it scales pretty well. Like it'll show up on phone just fine. I didn't add touch controls, but once I do, like it's totally mobile friendly. Um, I did play with the app cache package as well, so it goes in a single player mode when you're offline. Um, so it's, it's a it's single mobile. player mode, just you by yourself. Yeah, you. there's no point. There's no point. <laughs> I don't know why you ever do that, but um, you can. Um, so this is my first Meteor app. Had really a lot of fun playing with this uh, single code base thing where I just basically client and server codes. I did not use like client and server directories. Everything's in the same directory, so that means everything's loaded by default client and server. Um, I had a pretty cool concept before Velocity came out where I used Leica, if anyone used Leica, as a testing framework. So I was testing this uh, this game using Leica. So the computer would play a bot and test the game. Um, so you would see the computer in the in the game awesome. from a unit test. <laughs> um, I, was, I just really wanted to do that for my company because like we find front end unit tests really hard to write. People just don't do them. And I'm like, you can test anything. Um, you can test the game. Um, so I had that working back when Leica was huge, but now Velocity came out. I, I rewrote that in Velocity. I had some problems with velocity. It was like really volatile when it first came out. Um, so I'll probably get that working again. Uh, but it was cool to see the computer in the game testing it as a bot. So uh, you have a, a temporary collection for points for people who are signed in? or uh, Yeah, so this is, um, I'm eventually going to change. No, no one can spawn because everyone's taking the spawn point. Back up, let someone else in. Um, so yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, I can. I can answer any questions or walk through the code. It's also on my GitHub at Inyester, on GitHub. Um, but just to play with this, just to learn reactivity, this is Mongo, which is frightening. No one should ever do this in production. But um, Mongo is keeping track of everything. All the bullet, the bullets, the tanks, every movement you make is a Mongo document. There's also my statement to my company. It's like, you know what? Mongo's getting huge, and it can actually keep up with this. Like, if it can do this, we had 14 people playing at the same time. And there was no like no latency whatsoever. And I'm like, you know what, Mongo can handle this. Every time the like bullet goes like, even a pixel across the screen, that's a Mongo doc being updated. Really? So, yeah. Um, just because reactivity is free with Mongo, right? I'm gonna eventually switch this out with streams um, as the message queue system to make this work. But out of the box, I was just using Mongo. I'm still using Mongo right now today. Um, and uh, but you still want a Mongo component, right? Because you want to be able to cluster uh, your meteor game. And let's say there's multiple multiple lobbies, but even in one lobby, like, and there's four people playing, they may not be in the same server, right? So you need some kind of persistence. 
So I wouldn't move everything off of Mongo, but I put every single bullet move for a second. Being a Mongo document, that's insane, right? The chattiness is insane. And I can prove that to you. Like a console off the other Mongo document, scroll across the screen. Um, but uh, at least part of this would always be uh, Mongo driven, but more of it would also need your stream. So that's like the next part of this project. It's just a toy. Um, but that was my first entry into Meteor. Did you uh, do any mobile uh, mobilification on it? Yeah, are you so interested in up my So the, the reason this works out so well, although it doesn't work great in the projector, <laughs> but the canvas scales really well. You see the canvas, I don't know if you guys can tell, oh. but the canvas scales automatically. So coming up on your phone, a canvas app looks really, really great because it can, I, I draw this 800 by 600, but it doesn't really matter. It takes a viewport size and also scale the canvas down automatically. Um, is that so just native canvas or is there native, some layer? That's, just, really? that's because canvas scale. Oh, I, see. Is, I mean, this is all being drawn on the canvas, right? There's no sprites or anything, no JPEGs, no things. Um, it's all canvas driven, so it scales automatically. So the only thing missing on this, like you just add later if anyone's interested, is a tap controls for phone. Like you can totally bring this up on your phone, it works, the dialog box works, but after that, just there's just there's no way to bring up the keyboard. Yeah. Um, so I would do tap. Anywhere on the screen, and the and the tank would move toward that, and double tap the fire is, is my idea. But mm. if you guys have other ideas to do that, um, and then it's mobile friendly, boom. And then app cache again if you want single player mode. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense for this game, but there are <laughs> other games you can think of where you could play by yourself. Um, I had that working just fine with app cache. I was able to drive around a tank even though there's no server. Um, and, and then I actually did I did this in, in the in the, um, in the company I worked with. I showed this. I, I shot a bullet. I shot. I turned the server down. Um, and the server controls the bullet movement, so the bullet stopped in space like the Matrix. Um, and I moved in front of the bullet, and I started the server again, and shot myself. Um, <laughs> because that's, that's latency compensation in Meteor. You get that for free. And um, so, yeah. So, any other questions about that? Cool. Thank you. Okay, so let me. You're you're mirrored too. Yeah, mirror. well, you're mirrored. well, no, you're. I mean, you can. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but if it looks wonky up there. Right, right. right. Okay, so uh, my name is Greg Cook. I'm um, trying to build a startup that's serving uh, type two diabetics in India, and. We built a we decided to go with with um, with Meteor um, because that's there's one of me. I start up I have money. So no not, not any money for developers. So I try to do it all myself in Meteor, thinking everything's there. Can get it done. Um, the, the 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 intention of the app is to track people's diet or to let them give them a, a way to track their diet, but to make it really, really easy. And uh, so a big part of the app is to is a graphical mechanism that's going to make it hopefully fun and easy for people. But there's also a database of um, of Indian foodstuffs in the in the app. Um, so this is this is how this is kind of the experience. So I just want to walk through walk through experience. I, I have nothing prepared, so I'm just kind of throwing it around. But the intention here is that I'm, I want to deploy this thing on on iOS, Android, and web. Right off, I don't want to have to write three separate apps. I'm going to write an app once that that serves all. Um, so the first first thing, and I've, so what I've done is I've used, I've scavenged and used every component I can find. I think there's, um, there's probably two dozen com uh, components in this in, in this app structure. Um, so this is kind of the the uh, what it would look like on a mobile phone. Uh, I've got the I guess the sign in or the you know the regular uh, the, uh, account entry. accounts entry yeah uh -huh. so it's protecting me making sure that I that I uh, sign in with something logical 
Um, yeah, I just had to, I just had to click, click twice on the sign in button. There's some, and there's another component. There's, there, there's a, there are other components that I've I've run across since the point nine release. This bug has been introduced. I don't know where it's coming from, and the the, the folks or the uh, Josh Owens it doesn't know either. He's fixed it. Actually, that's not true. He's fixed it, but it hasn't been released yet um, to, to the uh, to atmosphere. Anyway, so what is this? So what are we doing here? No, this uh, uh, data table has a thousand entries in it, uh, food entries of Indian food. There's a little bit of, you can click, there's a little bit of data here to show you, but there's also, behind the scenes, there's, uh, we were, we're pulling data from the uh, USDA database and put it into our, our, our database, our uh, uh, Mongo database. So I've got a little component here that lets you, lets you view uh, uh, some data about this food stuff. Are you pulling that reactively or do you do that on a like, time basis, like just during now and again? It's, it's done reactively, but um, the data doesn't change that much. So I'm uploading the entire database into the browser. I just pull I mean, all 1,000. The, the USDA data information. Oh, that information is um, rotten. So we've pulled from the USDA database, and we spent several months so far validating that data because the, the data itself is actually fairly rotten. It's very dirty. Uh, it's inaccurate. So we've got our own data, our own data source now. And we've gone back to the to the USDA once to, to gather more information here and look for updates and such. It's a low, slow changing database, and there's this is a problem in the food in these food apps, uh, food tracker world. The databases are just they're either open or uh, crowdsourced, and they're just they're dirty. It takes time and effort to clean up the data in, in a nice form and in accurate form. So what I'm doing is, and, and because I need to support people who have the habit of connecting to the to the internet for like a few minutes to get all their updates, and then they don't connect but two or three times across the day. That's the behavior in India. Um, the app is designed to pull the database, the, the latest version of the database, and run everything. Just keep it on the phone. So, and that's what I'm doing here. There's a thousand items in here. Um, I can click and drop a little a little uh, tile. This is this is uh, not working right. This is Packery that I'm using, the component down here, down below. Um, this is also active code, so little bugs in it that uh, shouldn't be there. Uh, I'm checking, so if I drop down something, I've got too many carbohydrates in it, it'll let you know. Um, this is the functionality that supports diabetics. Um, We've shown this to a number of people in India, and they really like the uh, they like the playfulness of the interface. The fact that it's kind of drag and drop and such. Now, this is the basic gist behind the app. But I need to. My next step is to take this and go through the Cordova process before November fourteenth. Okay, that's World Diabetes Day, and we kind of want to bring the pilot of this out on World Diabetes Day. So if anyone wants to help me. <laughs> Port this thing to, or get this thing into Cordova. Um, cool. I work out of 1871, so easy to get to. All right, I'm sure there's people here that uh, you, can, you can talk to about that. That's that's good. That's what I, I, I think that's part of this, right? Like there's learning technology for fun, and then there's you know the business networking side of this. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think that it's great to to put that out there. If you don't put it out there, you're not going to get any help. So exactly. good stuff. So that's what I have. If anyone has any questions about the app, there's on this page. There's a not, there's the notification package, which is popping this these um, red notifications. There's jQuery data tables, which is a, a royal pain to to master. There's uh, uh, Packery uh, down here. Did I see someone raise their hand? Any questions? All right. Cool. Thanks, Greg. Talk to Greg if you want to, you know, help on this later. Cool. Cool. So I have to follow a guy who juggles and leads a discussion. <laughs> a guy who makes an awesome tank game. 
<laughs> and then the guy trying to solve a diabetes problem. <laughs> um, my name's Cole. Um, I've been making, let me know if it's, I just got this new computer, so I haven't set anything up. So, so it's legit. Alright. Um, I've set up a mirroring and displays to okay. make it easy to. Sorry, guys, thanks for your patience. Yeah, and then it, it, you'll be running in low res there and awesome. low res there. In a word. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it just goes away when you like minimize the display thing. Uh, yeah. okay. All right. Cool. And um, then maybe move the window over to the right a few a few pixels. About ten. This one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then. Oh, my bad. Slide, slide the, the, the yep, yep, yep. There you go. Cool. Okay. There you go. All right, um, so this is uh, an out. It's, everybody has a cool, fun side. Every, every app I think of always has some sort of monetary purpose, and I, I feel terrible about that. I wish I could just put it. It's like, hey, let's blow each other up with tanks. Uh, but anyways, this is um, an idea I had about a year ago, and I built in Rails a couple times, and it just, uh, as I told a few other friends, like it just never felt right. Um, I built it with my partner over here in the red shirt, Brian Kozik. Um, and we've been working on it for about six months. Um, it's, uh, again, one of my first Meteor apps. Um, and Brian's first. I was teaching him as we went. Uh, we read Discover Meteor, which I can't say enough about. Like, that's it's the best uh, introduction to Meteor, hands down, probably the best programming or introduction to a technology book I've ever read in my life. Um, it's so great. And Sasha's uh, awesome. And uh, to Dean's point earlier, the community has been really, really cool. I've never thrown a question up on Stack Overflow without it being answered probably like three to two or three hours at most. Um, and then there's plenty of resources online. Um, Brian, please let me know if I forget anything. Uh, so anyways, the concept here is really simple. I love going out and doing things with my friends. Um, but what I hate is organizing it. Uh, my friends are flaky, um, and I generally, uh, my big example is I love going to concerts. So I'd like, hey, who wants to go to this concert? I usually talk my friends into going, and uh, I, I have like five or six of them sign up, or say they want to go, um, and then I buy five or six tickets, and then the day of, we all know what happens. It's like they flake, or something happens. Um, the big use cases we have are like bachelorette or bachelor parties, where you're like trying to collect 50 bucks from every guy who's invited or every girl who's invited. And then, oh, I forgot 50 bucks, or oh, this or that. So this is like uh, kind of like an Evite type uh, app, or type website, um, but it asks you to pay beforehand. So you can't, aren't in, or you haven't said yes until you've actually paid. Um, so yeah, so we like to say this is where maybes go to die. Um, there are no maybes. If you like maybes, use Facebook. Um, if you need to sell tickets, use Eventbrite. Um, and what is it? Oh, if you're inviting to someone in, to an event in 2003, uh, use e um, <laughs> so that, That's our big our battle. You have to pick an enemy, right? So, anyways, um, I'll log in. Um, and please, at the bottom here, uh, we have just a beta sign up. It pings us and lets us know somebody wants to join our beta. Um, so, please uh, sign up if you have something to invite someone to. I definitely appreciate it. Um, and you can give a, a production meteor app a try. <laughs> So after you signed in, um, again, this is a little scritch, so excuse us. Um, you have a, your events on the left-hand side, and then invitations to events uh, from your friends. So my friend David um, invited me to his Halloween party, and then it shows up on my left-hand side since we both are using the app. Um, anyways, so you can go in here and create an event. And we'll say, here, Chicago, eating pizza and hacking. Uh, where should we meet? Let's meet here. Or what's, what's this called? Catalyst Ranch? Yeah. Okay, and then um, again, this is all kind of squinched up. Yeah, we do, it is mobile uh, as well, which I completed probably a week before they announced the app. Oh, that's not really showing up because of the resolution issues. But anyways, um, uh, yeah, about a week before they launched the app feature, we had finished our uh, responsive site, so that was great. Uh, anyways, you pick the date. 
to say the 30th. We'll meet at 8 o'clock. And then the RSVP date is kind of when you'd like to know by. Um, so we'll just say it's Friday. Um, here we can say an event cost. So like, oh, if I want it to be like 10 bucks um, for $10, you'll receive $10 as the event host because that's what it costs. That's what you need to do. Um, and then we charge, it's not really us, it's more of like the credit card fees because we just accept all credit cards. And then we send you your money using Venmo. Um, and we'd like to add on more ways of sending you money down the road, but for right now, just MVP stuff, we're going with this. Um, so that's what you could do there. But in this case, let's do a free event for example purposes. Okay, oops, this, there's a little more mobile for you. Um, here we can, I guess, um, could I add, I'll just do a Brian. I'm going to add you. Uh, you have a friend list over on the left, so I can click your friend list, and he's instantly added from your friend list over to the guest list. It's instant. It's saved in the database. Everything we're doing as we create this event is saved. We could abandon this right now and just go back to the dashboard, and there it is on the left. But then when we click on it, we see right here that, hey, you haven't sent this to anyone, and only one guy's invited. So let's go, oops, go back into it, invite some more people. Uh, anybody have any? Oops, anybody have any easy names and emails like that has like their computer in front of them or their phone in front of them? Bueller. Uh, Dean. 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 Uh, Dean Misk. Uh, M e a d e a n m i s c. At Yahoo. Yeah. Can I get one more? Burton at IDEO, Like that? Killer. Okay, we'll review our invitation real quick. All right, these are our, our fancy guest list over here. This is all just confirming all the information. Just open up your emails if you please, friends. We'll send the invite. Cool, we'll send in it. You can see the invitations have been sent. Our checklist has been created. Um, if I wanted to, I could go back to the guest list here and add more friends. I could add Dean uh, to my guest or my friends list over on the left, just with a click. There he is. And same with you, Burton, you're on the list now. Um, and then I could go and add anybody else, like um, Matt. Matt at Matt.com. Add him as a guest, he instantly shows up, we'll review, and Matt hasn't, or Matty hasn't received it, so we can send him one too. But we won't. So then, as a guest, you will receive an email invitation just saying, hey, your friend invited you to something. Here's the general gist. Check it out. And we're going to hack this a little bit. Oh, we don't have to hack it at all. I will add the guests, and I will add myself. Cool. All right, so this is my little hack. So we get an, uh, an, a, uh, a unique ID for this particular event. I was invited, and so I will type in my email. And then here's all the information that I, as the guest, need to see. And Burton accepted. Uh, Brian? Yep, there you go. So he, Brian instantly said, yeah, Dean, you can say yay or nay. Um, and then if I said no, there you go. Everybody, reactive. Everybody's in. So everything's reactive. Everything's good to go on that end. And then up at the top, I can see that three people are in. We haven't heard from two people. I'll say next time. And just thanks for the heads up, giving me my dynamic information, even though I'm as the guest. And that's it. Um, instant tip, you can add any feedback you want. Go to your profile, all this stuff. And again, it's all, it's all pretty basic, but it's um, reactive and happening right in front of you, which it makes the app feel so much more alive. I hate seeing the spinning wheel. Um, We've done a little bit of optimization, um, but really, like not too much. We've just started get, digging into Kadira, which is a uh, app analysis tool. So it will help you not just see how your app is performing, but then actually give you recommendations on how to improve that. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about testing your app a little bit more, um, please get into that. Um, any questions? Please. What are you hosting this? Uh, Modulus. So we have Modulus hooked up. Um, that's uh, that's our host, and then we're going to uh, compose.io or yeah, 
Um, so there are our Mongo database people. Oh, Compose um, is the Mongo host? Yep, yep. So there's uh, Mongo HQ, Digital Ocean, and then Compose are the people that seem to be really grabbing on and seeing the value in, in Meteor. Why did you stick with Modulus' uh, Mongo? Um, it's performant. Um, so right now, uh, Compose.io is just in general faster. I'll do respect to Modulus, like they're awesome. We didn't have any problems with them, but we read in several locations online, including like Josh Owens and some other people, I think, uh, were saying that like it was, uh, they were called like Mongo HQ before, and then they changed their name. So it's Compose, um, and they were great. Plus, for $18 a month, they're adding, <laughs> okay, so get into the weeds a little bit. Um, on your app, previous to what we were doing, uh, everything that was React was pub sub, so, or a, a pull diff, excuse me. So you're pulling for changes and then seeing those changes and then changing it reactively, which is great um, and it works, but it was uh, horrendous on the CPU from what I remember reading. Um, so what they did, what the Meteor team did was use upload tailing, which is a feature of, of Mongo, which is a saying that as your database goes, the tail is following it, right? Is kind of the way I think of it. And it's like anything that changes, it's con like a console log, think of it that way. Anything that changes is rendered through a, a like that log. And when it views that log, it goes, oh, well that's what was changed. So we don't have to parse through all your data. We just need to grab that one thing and change that and swap that one thing, which keeps it great. Oh, uh, I was looking at CPU usage and we're, actually I'll just open up, I think you're open. Oh yeah, there we go. So, if you look at our CPU usage there, um, it's that's really low. Like that's that's really low. Um, and you're gonna see, I th I think it is unless I'm reading these statistics wrong. But I, we were seeing it was much higher before. Um, and then we added op lock tailing, and everything got way faster. But I digress. Um, Compose.io for eighteen dollars a month was offering the opportunity to have op lock tailing. There's and modulus at that time wasn't. Yeah, because modulus changed. They stopped doing I'm it. not surprised. Yeah, they, they stopped doing it. Them, they changed, but then the movement, you have to move your database manually from whatever the reason before to not using joint. Yeah, I mean, we uh, up and lifted our database. The whole process took like 15 minutes. Yeah, it's a trip. It thing. was, it just it was to yeah, and it, I'd never really done that stuff before. And also, I guess I'd just like to say, like, I'm not like a developer of several, several years of experience. Um, I've truly been developing uh, like a year, a year and a half, you know, again, depending on how you look at it, like true programming, I kind of messed around with HTML and CSS for a while, but um, I mean, it's, it's come together really, really quickly. Um, yeah. Uh, please. Uh, credit cards? Credit cards, we're using Braintree, um, and then storing it client side, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> sorry. That was a bad joke. That was a bad joke. You I know. Get around. Right? Um, <laughs> No, it's, yep, we accept everything uh, through Braintree, and then all of our payments sent out are coming from Venmo. And then why, you do have the option of sending it out through Braintree, you chose to go with Venmo? Is there a reason why you Venmo? No, we didn't have the option to send through Braintree, oh. from my understanding. Uh, again, not to get too into the weeds, um, but uh, they needed, at the time, and I might have to follow up on this, which I will be doing, um, Braintree wasn't allowing you to send money out to like a router and an account number. Um, or they do if you have like a merchant account or something like that. Um, we didn't really, the Venmo was speed for us. So uh, that, that's the real reason. The moment we have your money, we hold on to it. Once your event is closed, uh, 18 hours after that, just kind of giving people the time to say like, hey, I want a refund, or maybe you want to give a refund to people. It gives you that time. Once it closes, it gives you a little button that says, hey, pay me my money. The moment you click that, it's an API call to Venmo saying, send them the money. It's all good. Um, and then you will see that in your, in your account, uh, in your Venmo account immediately. And most of the time when you send to a bank account, it takes you know, three to five business days. Well, that's an option we'll be adding later. So you have the speed of Venmo, but it goes to your Venmo account. And the other one will be slower, um, but it will go directly to your bank. Yes. So, so there's nothing at this point that's like night at, at the at nightly settle up the accounts. There's no asynchronous or batch component of this right now. Um, no, 
Okay, no, because I was I was wondering how you would do that with Meteor if, if there was. Uh, no, um, so uh, from a batch perspective, um, yeah, so we're using just strictly cron jobs because we're not, it, it's either like we do the call and then we hold it and then that's it. Like yeah. there's nothing to do until you ask for your money. Um, and just to verify everything is legit, if you have any problems, you can contact us. Um, but I, we were looking at Q, um, which is a node um, package uh, that was more of a, a job processing rather than just a cron job. It'd be more of a, hey, we got all this stuff, just hold on to it for now for a second, process it when you get the chance because that's that's a big thing. Yes? Yeah, one more um, question. What are using that date? Yeah. Um, it was time picker, I think it was. Time picker. Or pick a date? Pick a date. <laughs> I believe it's, I believe it's, pick a date. it's the time. More stay in the time. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. Pull it up. Uh, it's really handy though. Uh, it works really well. It's customizable. Um, we've been able to actually, I don't know if you noticed, but when you, I didn't really show, but you could say, oh, I want my event to be on the 30th. Well, it's too early. On the 14th. If you go back and go here, it takes it gets rid of everything after that because nice. that doesn't make any sense. You have to have your RSVP date before the event date itself. So we were able to customize it that way, which was pretty, really cool. Um, I know we're kind of all over the level, like all over the board on experience level, but um, another big thing that we had changed was production um, method calls. Uh, so there, you can do a client side insert to a collection. So you could say like, um, let's see. So can I can I pause you, Eric? Yeah. Um, or Cole, Cole Erickson. Um, yeah, I, I'd love. Oh, yeah, for every, I'd love. Sorry. I'd love for everyone to be able to tap uh, his brain. You know, everyone else's brain. I just, time to go. I just wanted to to say thank you to everyone and like let's have some like hack night time. You know, where we can like split up less than uh, turn up the music. I'll take requests or whatever, and uh, and we can kind of do more show and tell. Uh, True. Uh, for the Sorry, production. I didn't mean to take up too much time. No, no, no. I think it's great that everyone wants to know. So you got this thing in production. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, let's rock and roll. Thank you.